Hey everybody, welcome back, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brianna Lentz and it's been a little while, hasn't it? Um, let's see, the last time I think I talked to you, was it before Halloween? Probably, I think. I hope you had a great Halloween. I'm having a mocha. Oh, I have a bear mug and then my husband has a moose mug and these come out every year for Christmas time. I decorated this weekend, um, everything but the trees. And I thought I had a lot more Christmas stuff, but since I have the storage, if you haven't already uh, seen my previous floss tube, watch the end of that one and you'll see me antiquing and you'll know what I'm talking about. But I have like storage, like things to put things on besides like a shelf in my table. And um, now I'm like, oh, I'm like minimalist Christmas. I'm cool with that. So, and plus it just allows me to make all the things. <laughs> I need to make this. I need this fabric. I'm going to make the thing, you know, and then, you know, eventually I'll make it. But I hope you guys have been doing really good. A lot has changed in the last couple of weeks. Um, a lot. I have a lot of exciting stuff. I, I don't have as much crustage as I have in previous videos. I do have some, but I have a ton of stuff to share with you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just say it right now. I got a stall in a craft antique booth. Wait, that doesn't make sense. I got <laughs> I got a like handmade slash antique booth uh, stall in a store that sells crafts and antiques. You know what I mean? So um, it is the Rusty Cabin in Savannah, Oklahoma, which is like 15 to 20 minutes south of me. And it's, it's so nice. I had an antique booth uh, before when I lived in Greeley, Colorado, but my, uh, my, my stall was two hours Northeast in Sterling, Colorado. And I just never felt like I could give it the attention that it deserved um, because it was a lot. And we had, um, we only had our van and our Jeep at that point. So it was a lot of miles to put back and forth. But it was great because my in-laws live in Sterling, so it was great to go to the to go do my antique booth and visit and then come home. But again, I always felt like I, I didn't give it the justice that it does that it, that the booth deserved, and it always bothered me. So my husband said, "Hey, I just passed this place. Why don't you go in there and check it out today?" And I was like, "I don't have time to do that. Are you kidding? Like I'm trying to do YouTube and all this other stuff." And, and I went in there and they're wonderful people and a great price. And they just opened about a month ago. And needless to say, we have been so busy doing that. I have, um, I have a lot of like vintage stuff, but I've been selling some of that at our local, um, consignment shop and you get a really good return on that. And I love doing that. And so I, I send the girls clothes there. And then I've also been selling like, you know, home decor stuff because I wasn't planning on having a booth. But sometimes the best things in life just happen. And you can either say yes, or you can just say no. And they complain, you know, like can continue to complain that things aren't going your way or whatever. So we said yes. I said yes. <laughs> so we've been having so much fun. I love making things with my husband. It's one of my favorite things to do. And so this has been really fun and I have a lot to show. I have a lot to show you and share with you. And it's also fun because I have a lot of tutorials that I wanna share with you too. Um, if you're new here, and I don't think I've ever really said it, but um, I love primitive meets modern. That's my thing. Like I think I said country craft before, but I think I've nailed it down even more. Like I love primitive meets modern and I love old school meets modern and I like you can just put it all together and I have a very eclectic style. So let's pause here and let's start talking about cross stitch because that's what you're here for. That's why it's called floss tube. So let's get in there. I feel like this is very high. So I'm going to adjust this down. Um, if you're wondering where Julesy is, she is napping. She, we have all had extremely bad allergies. Yeah, that's better. So if I flail my hands, I don't look like spirit fingers. Anyway, you can see the whole chicken wings. 
Anyway, I'm on a good one. She's sleeping. I'm usually distracted. So here we go. Also, so she's sleeping. She's been suffering with bad allergies. So has my daughter. And I am not wearing makeup today. So if I look like a pilgrim, it's part of my primitive meets, meets modern. I'm just kidding. Um, I have a leaky eyeball and it just won't stop. And that's really why I haven't recorded a floss tube in the last week. Because normally I would have uploaded last week, but I thought, oh, you know, let's just get my eye. Let's get my eyes. Like, I just don't want to deal with that while I'm recording. It, it's not going away. So here I am. Leaky eyeball and all. So I'll try to pause and wipe my eye with my hanky, but we'll see how that goes in the editing. So first of all, I have a finish. Um, I finished, oh shoot, what is this called? PC chicken coop. Okay. Candy cane coop by Priscilla and Chelsea stitching with the housewives. And here it is. I love this one. Love it. Love it. There's a lot of detail in here. I feel like people don't talk about that. Maybe it's just me being a wimp, but <laughs> there was a lot of detail and I absolutely loved it. Um, these peppermints and these, I call them peppermint clouds. I'm not really sure what her vision to call those are, but those are peppermint clouds to me. And I loved them. That was my favorite part. Um, this is uh, stitched with all the called for DMC and uh, on 28 count T Monaco, like straight from the tube T Monaco. And I like it a lot. I have a finish idea for this that I'm going to do this week. I've just been um, sewing for the shop. So I haven't done the finishing that I wanted to do. I'm kind of, I'm a week behind on my finishing of what I wanted to show you because I've been, you'll, you'll see, you'll see, I've been busy. Um, and I have had a stitch along for uh, the Prairie Schooler 2020 Santa. I'll put the hashtag here. And my goal is to finish the Santa by uh, December 1st, which I'm well on my way. Well on my way. So this is what it is supposed to look like. And this is my progress. What is happening? He's so cute. I just, I adore him. I love the colors. And I, one of my favorite things is the green um, accents. And the 221 is the red that um, she chose for the Santa's suit. And I really, I like those colors. But that's my stitching. Oh, I have, um, that's my cross stitching. If you're stitching along with me, I hope that you are doing well. You might be done already and you can stitch any Prairie Schooler, whatever, and, um, Prairie Schooler Santa. Hashtag me, tag me on Instagram. That'd be fun. I'm also just re-downloaded TikTok and now I make like, you know, I started to make TikTok videos and now I'm doing a whole bunch more. There's like no cross stitch on TikTok. Well, there's some cross stitch, but like not floss tube cross stitch. You know what I mean? And so I'm having fun with that. So if you um, are interested in visiting the planet TikTok, here's my handle. <laughs> Come friend me. Um, but I did uh, work on this Santa, this Santa's done. I'm going to make this into a coaster. I'm pretty sure. Um, you see blue. That's just the water soluble ink because I'm going to tea dye it and all that blue will go away. Uh, this is an embroidery pattern from a, an embroidery uh, pack. And I just took it to my copy machine and I shrink it down to size. And I have um, this one. And then I'm running an experiment for a video. Um, and so I traced that one on with my light box with a water soluble pen. And then I did the next one with a friction pen. And I'm curious to see if after it dries uh, at wall, after I stitch it and I iron off the, I, you know, heat erasable pen, and then I tea dye it, if that heat erasable pen will come back, like it is so rumored to do so. So I'm interested. So that, um, that is really a quick stitch. I stitched the Santa in probably, you know, less than two hours. I just, it hasn't been a top priority because that's just something that I want to do for Christmas. Um, and then I don't remember if I showed this to you or not, but I really, um, this won't take very long and I want to make a candle mat for my teapot. 
and this is the pattern and I paid for this pattern I'll put a shop right here and always I link um, whoever I talk about I link my own stuff down below to my website and I link my show notes to my website and all of the people that I talk about like if I purchased a pattern I'll link to the pattern that I purchased purchased this pattern for I think 250 on Etsy and she has a ton of embroidery patterns hand embroidery and machine embroidery patterns so I'll link her there um so I've been doing uh that that's been fun that was fun and I can't wait to get back to that so I also before I I signed up for the booth I started to play around with uh machine embroidery like free motion machine embroidery and applique. And I had started to do this uh, when my daughter was first born and I did these things by hand. Like all the stuff that the Cricut can do for you, I was doing by hand on her onesies. And um, I, I just kind of had like a full circle moment that um, I've missed the Cricut train. So I'm interested in a Cricut maker. Um, but this is my first project and I used Elmer School glue and then I have a free motion um, foot. I feel like I should get that. So I'll place right here what machine I have. I bought it in uh, March or April. My machine broke when I was making masks at the beginning of the pandemic for Etsy and I had to buy a new machine. This is the only one that they had at Walmart and I love it. Um, and so then uh, what I did is when I bought the machine, I went online and I also bought the uh, accessory kit that went with the machine. I got this off Amazon, it was $30. So it comes with the walking foot and quilting things, which I never knew what these uh, were for. And they're guides for when you do your own um, quilting. So you can have like your lines spaced accordingly. If that makes sense. Um, like evenly spaced. And uh, the foot that I'm using on my machine to do free motion embroidery is this machine. And it's been really fun. It's really easy. It's not difficult. Great videos on YouTube. I'm looking to make my own videos on YouTube, obviously. Because I think we all have our own styles. And sometimes I feel like when we gear away from a video that we saw on YouTube or from what we, like our friend showed us how to do or whatever, um, we don't think that there's another way to do it. And there's always another way to do it. And my brain usually thinks a little bit differently. So why not throw in my own two cents? So I've been doing that. Um, and... I decided to make a journal cover and it's just going to be like a thing that I have and I thought it would be fun um, to make inserts for like an altered journal and uh, there are 25 pages in here that I can write on and so each day what I'll do is I'll write um, something about that day of December. So December 1st will have its own page, December 2nd and so on. Um, this I think is a little bit small for this book. So I think I might make another one and then make another page or another cover for this But I also had fun experimenting sewing on paper Yeah, a lot of fun. I, I had a lot of fun. I've just been playing Playing around and having fun because I want to share a lot of content with you um, and What really spurred a lot of this creativity was my were my Muslim Santas if you haven't already, I'm going to put right up here a link to my last video that I've posted, which are uh, muslin Santas, which I share how to make with you um, from like the directions of the Better Homes and Gardens 1989 uh, Christmas Country Crafts book. And then I kind of go and do my own thing. And so these are my previous finishes for the week is this basket of Santa's. Oh my goodness. This has just spurred so much creativity. Um, if you've already seen that video, thank you so much. I'm just going to quickly go through and show you. Um, this is just tea dyed fabric. And um, this is the Santa that they provide you in the book. And I love this one. I love the simplicity of this one. I love the aged look of it. Um, this is another pattern on the book and I was practicing like the whole process and I painted this. 
and just a simple tea dyed backing. I also um, I drew this Santa and then I painted the the face. And I love this one. This one's one of my daughter's favorite. She loves touching it because it's really soft. Um, and then my second machine or free motion embroidery project was this Santa. Um, I just put some stabilizer behind the muslin, iron on stabilizer, and I just um, outlined his face and gave him his hands. Um, and then I, and I, I drew these last Santa's and then I did embroidery on this one and so this embroidery has a white DMC and then a cream DMC and um, instead of the hands he has little pockets I love this one love this one a lot so that was really fun so if you haven't already go check out that video and I'll, I'll link it down below too if you don't like clicking on the i-cards but loved that um, I also made a whole lot of these for my shop so I'll insert some footage right here um, and so basically when we talked about getting the shop, I knew what I had to sell like as antiques in my stuff, but then I thought I need to make some, some things and I just finished making that video. So I decided, let's see if people want to buy that cause I haven't seen that in stores. And then I also made, um, ornaments, um, little, little pillows and I painted some of them and I just left some of them plain. So that was great. That was great. I love that. That was a fun process. Um, so with that, as I've been doing a lot of preparation for certain things, experimenting to create my own style to set me apart and just playing for videos, like I've said. And so I took some homespun and I painted, I just took some white acrylic paint and I painted it. And then this is the backside, which I think I like the backside the best. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll just use that for backing for, um, future projects. And then I, um, just experimented. I have some other ideas for this, which I'll share later, but cool textures. Um, I tea dyed a lot of fabric. Love tea dyeing. And it smells really good. Um, I have, like, I've bought fabric, which I'll share here, the my haul from Walmart. They had some, they were, like, fully stocked with fabric. And when I went, the only holiday fabric that they had were um, flannel. Yeah, they were only like flannel fabrics. And so I was kind of forced to go outside of the box. And so I bought like Christmas Eve fabric, but not like in your face Christmas. And then the other thing that I bought was they had this yesterday. So I bought this. For less than $6, I got a jelly roll. And I'm not sure what like the typical jelly roll um, is. Like uh, how much fabric you typically get in like a regular jelly roll. Like if you were to buy it off of Missouri Star Quilt Company, but um, this this one is 20, 20 pieces of two and a half inch by 42 inch strips of fabric. So I thought that was a good value. And so I want to um, play with some quilt as you go ideas with this. For my house and for the shop and I'm gonna call it the shop because right now I have my Etsy store on vacation just while I figure everything out because I put a lot of the stuff that I have in my Etsy store in person because I wasn't moving anything on Etsy I wasn't getting any sales um, they changed certain things uh, a few months ago and I've had one maybe I think I've had two sales it really hurt my shop <laughs> what they did um so I just thought, why, why not try to sell those things in person? They're just sitting there. So I have that and I thought that I might um, just throw some of these things up there in my shop too to see if you guys would be interested. 
Uh, if you see anything that you like that I've made, let me know. Uh, hit a comment or you can you can always message me or email me um, if you would be interested in purchasing something from me. But I'm going to be opening my Etsy store again very, very soon. I just have to get that going in the next week with some items. So I think now would be a good time to show you some of the other items that I've made for my store. And then at the very end of the video, I thought it'd be fun to talk about books. So if you're into that, stick around to the very end. But I'm going to go get the, the stuff that I want to talk about. And then I'll talk about books. And that's basically it. And I'm going to be uploading a tutorial on how to make these. I saw um, this concept on Pinterest. And then I just kind of ran with it and made it my own. And then my husband and I brainstormed and he uh, cut the boards down and sanded them for me. And then we stained them. And they're so much fun to make. They're so cute. We've made 12 and I want to see how they sell before I make more of them. But, um, like I said, I will be uh, creating a tutorial for you. If you're interested, definitely let me know in the comments. If you're interested in the tutorial on how to make these or something similar, I have a lot of ideas coming for this concept, but, um, these trees are so cute with this ticking fabric. It's very cute and the stands are very much, they're just classy, very primitive meets modern in my opinion. So got the red ticking, they had blue ticking, just simple trees. And what I like about it is that you could leave them up for the holidays and, but you could even, in my opinion, you can leave them up longer than that. You can leave them up for winter. I love homespun, so I did um, a couple different ones. Um, I love that there was a patriotic homespun, so I did a lot in this color. I love this one. It's incredible how much you can make with a half yard of, of homespun. It really goes a long way. And then um, I've made one of these. So do you remember that uh, fabric I painted on that I showed you? So it looks like snow in the background. It looks like snow. And then I designed this snowman and I embroidered him. And he's just so cute. And so the stick is shorter and it's a different way to display your work. And this is actually how I'm gonna finish my uh, candy cane coop, I've decided. I'm gonna, I, cause I haven't made any of these for me. I've made them for the shop. I'm gonna um, finish my candy cane coop like this. Maybe have it a little bit shorter and that's how I'm displaying it. Cause the candy cane coop otherwise doesn't fit in with my house <laughs> at all. <laughs> but if I style it like that, it'll fit in. Um, and then I made this pillow which I, I want to put these up in my Etsy store. Again, like this video, let me know down below if um, this is up your alley. If you would be interested in buying one or if you think that this would sell. I just love this Santa. So this is muslin fabric. Um, I made the pillow and then it's, um, you know, free motion app embroidery and applique. And I just made this, I just made this one today. And it's a little moose. How cute. Little moose. So cute. More homespun. So cute. So I'll, uh, I'm having a video uploaded. Um, well, I'm going to make a video and upload it soon about the whole thing about the antique booth, about, you know, what it looked like before moving in, preparing for it, everything. I think that'd be really fun. I think that you guys would enjoy watching it and I would enjoy making that and looking back upon it because you know, it's going to look a little bit barren at first, but every week we're making more and more things to put in there. And the more that you make, the more you can sell. Oh, I have one more. I love this one. This little, this little moose. So I zigzagged around it and I like the imperfection. I don't think the handmade has to look factory made. It's handmade. Like you want to do a good job, but I like the whims. I like things to look whimsical when they're handmade, when I make them. 
I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for a really good job and a good finish and a good piece of work that's going to, you know, withstand the test of time. But the finishing of it, in my opinion, doesn't need to look like I bought it from Hobby Lobby. It needs, you know, it's handmade. And I don't mind that people can tell it's handmade, that it's from me. So I don't know what your opinion is on that, but if I don't have a corner that's perfectly out, it's not going to keep me up at night. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. Here comes the leaky eyeball again. Hold on. Okay. So, um, so that's, I mean, we've been making a lot of stuff. We're going to go hunting for more treasures to put in the shop, which I'm really excited about because, um, one of my favorite things to do is to go bargain hunting and to go looking for stuff. And I, I've been really intentional with my spending and what I buy and what I bring into my house. So I haven't wanted to go thrifting. I haven't wanted to go super antiquing besides like going with my um, mother-in-law in October. I told her, I said, I haven't been going because if I'm not going to buy something, <laughs> you know, I don't need to go. I, you know, I can stitch. But now I have a reason, and so I'm excited. I'm excited to go spend money and then maybe even go make more money from the things that I buy. Doesn't sound bad to me. So anyway, so if you're interested, I just thought I would share a little bit about what I'm reading right now. If you don't know, I'm a huge book nerd. I um, love books. And um, first of all, I wanted to share if you like reading books about history, historical fiction, or, um, you know, books that are as closely related to history as they can be with, uh, you know, um, if that makes any sense, but I love reading, uh, books about the civil war and a lot of why I like historical fiction, but if you also are interested in maybe not just the battles of, of the war, um, I wanted to recommend to you Liar, Temptress, Soldier, Spy. Uh, this is an easy read. Um, and also the audiobook is fantastic. If you list, if you have a uh, Scribd, if you have, I, I've never done Audible, but um, Libby on your uh, library, I'm not sure if your library will have this audiobook, but it is awesome. The narrator is fantastic. I read it and listened to it. I did both because um, it's just wonderful. So it says, four women undercover in the Civil War. Um, yeah. Go to Amazon, read the synopsis. I highly, highly recommend it. It has women from both sides of the war. It gives you a lot of information that you may have never heard of women that you may read about and then realize, Oh, I have heard that name before. It is so wonderful. And it is not a snog. It's not a slog to read it. It's really great. I got my physical copy from bookoutlet.com. I don't know if they have any right now, but I got my physical edition for less than $6. So highly, highly recommend it. The author is Karen Abbott. Um, and she did a fantastic job. Fantastic job. So if you are interested, Civil War era books, highly recommend. Um, I got this from Book Outlet as well. I haven't read it yet, but this is um, on my radar, on my immediate radar anyway. Um, this is written by Jennifer Chavarini, an Elm Creek quilt novel, The Union Quilters. In 1862, the men of Watersford, Pennsylvania rallied to President Lincoln's call while Dorothy Granger marshals her friends to wield their needles for the Union. Meanwhile, uh, Annette Bergstrom hides the shame she feels for her husband's pacifism. Um, Constant Rice struggles to help her husband gain entry to the Union Army despite the color of his skin. As a, work, as a woman work, hope, and pray, the men they love confront loneliness, boredom, and danger on the battlefield. But the women of the sewing circle also forge a new independence that will forever alter the patchwork of life in the Elm Creek Valley. And then um, the New York Journal of Books says, uh, Jennifer Chavarini's strength is not only writing strong female characters, but also placing them in interesting lives and times. So the, you might be interested in this. Never heard of it, but I saw it on Book Out and I thought, oh, <laughs> yes, hello, down for that. Um, 
but I, in the last couple of years, have really gotten into adult fantasy, not the weird kind, like legitimate fantasy books, um, like wizards and stuff, and magic, and epic fantasy, because why not do hard things? So I, um, I've, I've got a lot to share with you on epic fantasy and adult fantasy, if you're interested, but I just thought I would test the water, see if you guys are hot and cold on this, but um, The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu is uh, fantastic. Okay, so this is a fantasy that is set in, um, well, let's see, how does he say it? It's a, it's a fantasy that's not set in the Western world. It's a different look. And this is a, a Chinese American writer and he wrote fantasy for um, from stories and stuff they hear from when he was younger. He also does a lot of the um, translations for, uh, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna be able to say his name. I'll put it here. But he does a lot of the translations for him, who is a fantastic science fiction writer. If you're interested, like I said, I can, I can share more with you. But uh, this is a huge read. Um, it is hundred and something pages. Also a great audiobook. I like to read and listen to my audiobook. Like if I'm stitching, I love putting on an audiobook. If I'm painting, I put on an audiobook. You can put on music or whatever, but I also like listening to fantasy. And what I found about this book is that it took me a couple months to get through while I, you know, did other things. And I read other books while I'm reading a large chunky book, like the fantasy. Um, and it was just like coming back to a television show. Like it was just like picking up on the next episode. So, um, Go to Amazon. I'll, I'll link this to Amazon. I don't have affiliates. I wish I did. But um, if you're interested, also, if you don't follow me on Goodreads, we should be friends. And you can, um, I'll put my link to Goodreads down there as well. But uh, as far as what I'm currently reading, I'll put a picture up here. I'm reading, uh, I started reading Robin Hobb for the first time. And it was, uh, the first book I read was Assassin's Apprentice. And I finished that in like a week. And then now I'm reading The Royal Assassin. And I'm like 40% done with that. Really, really great. Apparently this storyline has like 22 books in it. Like there's, I think the first three books is like about the assassin, the royal assassin, right? And then um, like there's spinoffs. And then like she has other series that come out as a continuation of the series. And then you like spinoff series for other characters. I'm not really sure. I just thought I would test the waters and see if I like it and I love it. And um, again, I like to listen to it while I stitch. It just helps me get out of my head and um, I, I just really enjoy it. Do you read fantasy? Do you like those kinds of books? I like it. It's a lot of fun. Um, so if there's anything on this video that you have questions about, let me know um, in the comments down below. Please follow me on my social media. I have Instagram, TikTok, I have a website. Thank you for subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, please don't forget to hit that notification bell because it's really important. I didn't get notified that I uploaded a video on my other, like my personal YouTube where I watch all of my content most of the time. And it was like a week later that I got notified that I, I had uploaded a video. So please hit that button. Um, I really appreciate your time. I hope you guys are doing really good. I know life is crazy. I... I just really appreciate you guys. I hope to see you guys soon. Things are gonna start to like calm down to an equilibrium again for me where I can do more stitching. But I mean, I have been stitching, just not like cross stitching. So, you know. Um, but yet again, I hope you guys are doing really good. If you end up making anything like inspired by what you saw, please let me know. I would love to see it. Tag me on Instagram, please. I love the community and I wanna grow my involvement in the community. So, you know, for a throwback to my high school days, holler at your girl, okay? And, um, cheers. See you guys, see you guys in the next project and the next video.